We're coming to the question and answer uh, part of our uh, webinar today. First of all, I would like to thank all the speakers for their nice presentations. And I would like to kick off this uh, moderated round uh, with a simple question. Um, in the uh, physical workshop uh, two, year, two weeks ago, we had this uh, question from uh, some in the, in the audience regarding water consumption and regulation, uh, specifically, I think, referring to the Dube municipality. Um, there has been the question raised that the Dube municipality would not uh, allow uh, cooling towers to be installed anymore uh, with fresh air. Uh, well, sorry, with fresh, with fresh water. Uh, Raf, I remember there was a discussion with uh, two gentlemen uh, attending the workshop from the Dube municipality, and uh, perhaps you can uh, give clarifications to uh, certain uh, misunderstandings which have been uh, perceived then. Exactly, uh, Marcus, and thank you for bringing it up. So, indeed, uh, of course, when you build on a project when you design a project the project need to go to the municipality for approvals and the municipality also has their objectives and targets to reduce energy consumption and reduce overall water consumption so they become more and more strict on the overall consumption on the given project and then when they look at uh, water consumption of a building uh, it seems or as a coincidence, two of the projects that were under review by some of the audience uh, or some of the members in the audience received a comment on water consumption by the cooling tower. Now, we brought this back to the Dubai municipality and they indeed uh, agreed on the comments raised, but the comments raised were not to the extent that you cannot use water cooled solutions. In fact, they encourage the use of energy saving technologies. The comments raised were, as per our understanding, the water usage calculations are wrong. They are fully calculated based on the peak water consumption uh, quantities, and they do not take into consideration the seasonality of a system. They said this is the first important parameter which we always would like to understand better. The second is they also say we would like to see more usage of uh, recycled water, more usage of additional technologies that will uh, support the reduction of water consumption. And they said, we clearly know that there are technologies available like automatic water dosing equipment to make sure that the amount of water that you will bleed from the cooling tower is the exact amount of water. Not too much, not too less. They say we can also upgrade cooling tower equipment to more sustainable materials of construction that trigger a reduced amount of water bleed onto a project. And they said, this is exactly what we would like to see. We do not always like to see the, the lowest cost materials with the highest energy consumption and the highest water, uh, water consumption. So it clearly indicates that the municipalities are more and more aware of the available technologies, are more and more looking for the highest energy uh, efficient, highest water efficient uh, equipment to be installed in their cities. And this is exactly our role and our responsibility to make sure that we can offer this to the market and to make sure that the market makes uh, the best use of these available technologies. Thank you. Um, staying, with, uh, staying with water, uh, when we look at uh, uh, recycled water, GSE water, uh, Jukri, maybe you can uh, chime in here how much is the penetration of of, of recycled water uh cooling towers in the market in, at the moment i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, marcus can you repeat it uh what is the penetration of 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 uh, systems using recycled water at the moment in the in the middle east so the ratio between uh you know cooling towers who use recycled water and and uh, fresh water do you have any idea I need to double check that figure. I don't have a ready number in mind. Uh, I'm not sure if my colleagues will will know. Oh, uh, for more experience, we can see that one to two out of three projects 
are designed with uh, with the concept in mind of using recycled water. Uh, in practice, it's not always possible that all that recycled water will be used for cooling towers only because the issue with recycled water is that the availability of the recycled water is not constant. So uh, from, a, from a system design perspective, you cannot always fully rely on recycled water only because you may come short of water in a, in a, in a certain uh, period of the, of the, of the operating uh, timeline. So what we see more and more is that recycled waters are, 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 are used as part of the overall building water consumption. And this then reduces the overall building potable water consumption for which the cooling towers take, take, take uh, a massive part in that, of course. Mm -hmm. There is Thank also you, another, so, sorry, Marcus, but to stay a bit on the water, there was also another uh, misconception that, that, that the cost of water is expensive. But I can uh, I can challenge everybody to put the costs of water next to the cost of energy, and you will see that that energy is uh, is multiple times more expensive than water. Also, this is not unlogic because if you understand that that to generate power to generate electricity, a lot of water is consumed as well. So the water price is 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 also part of the power generation price. So, so it's better to consume a bit of water in terms of uh, costing than to consume much more electricity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, when we when we talk about, and I think you have also uh, touched this subject. So there are, there are systems and there are uh, products in place which which already come with a very high uh, efficiency and, and quality. Uh, now we know that the in the, in the Middle East, we have a, a huge pressure on price. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about the quality aspects and uh, why cheap is always more expensive than uh, a higher uh, price project from the beginning. Uh, Chukri, Jai, maybe you can uh, chime in here. From your experiences, how do you, how do you see this, uh, this issue? Well, uh, in terms of, I'll, I'll cover the certification part, Jay, uh, if, you, if you don't mind. Uh, in terms of the certification, uh, Marcos, and uh, let me know if this is the, if I understood the, the question correctly. You are asking is why the certification can play a big role in the consumption or the cost of the system. Is that correct? Is this is what you are asking? Uh, it's 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 it will it would be part of the I guess part of the discussion. Uh, the, the, the overall question is re regarding uh, quality and efficiency. Uh, um, a certified product usually also a certification costs a lot of money, so uh, the, the money is of course priced into the into the product. Um, of course. How can we uh, like what is what can we do as an as an industry uh, to motivate people to to consider uh, quality over price? Well, um, in my last presentation, uh, I highlighted the type of test that the equipments are going through in order to get the certification, right? And in the physical event, I gave an example of some suppliers who might approach consultants with the XQs, or not, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna rephrase the word, with the argument of a product which is cheaper, like 20, 30% cheaper than a tier one product, I will call it. And the reason for that, is that our, the products which are certified are designed to the highest quality, efficiency, tested by third party, as I mentioned, and any published data are already been verified. An uncertified product, you cannot guarantee the performance of that specific product, right? And I, unfortunately, I still see uh, people accept an uncertified product and taking the risk, right, by having a product that not guarantee its performance will not not be guaranteed which will affect the chiller of course the the chiller consumption and i have been in touch with some of the energy companies marcos and this is a very important topic thank you for asking that and energy companies who are looking at energy performance contracting energy contracting we call it right and those guys whenever they go to a site the first thing they look at is the chiller right and they are mainly working on the on the water cooled chiller they focus on the chiller and they start to improve the consumption, the energy consumption of that specific chiller. And let's take an example of water cooled. 
they are ignoring the cooling tower while the cooling tower as jay and raf explained will will by if, if it's designed or it's it's worked to its desired output it will help the chiller to perform better reducing its consumption correct the cooling tower is a small machine in terms of consumption but it played a big role in the overall determine the overall consumption of the system because a bad cooling tower a bad let's say outcome of the cooling tower to the chiller can cause can cause the chiller to be exhausted right the compressor to be overloaded and it will consume more thank you jay you want to add something to that yeah so i would like to add that just to just to elaborate a little bit further what shukri mentioned uh, let us say uh, we buy a certified product uh, which uh, the requirement is 1000 tons for a site and if we take it from a non certified company it's not sure that they are going to supply you 1000 tons but no one knows huh? so maybe they end up supplying you 900 tons which would mean that there is a shortfall of capacity of 100 tons first of all the cooling would not be met and people generally you know when they don't get cooling they start looking at chillers even before at anything else and second would be the power consumption would go very high the operational cost will go very high because the system would be running at its over capacity and it's not running at 100 percent it's running more than that so it is very very important to, to get the certified products because these are being certified by third parties and these are this is not a specific manufacturer and uh, this is a third party which is an independent party and which is certifying the product the performance is certified and second on the quality aspect uh, sometimes we see that cheap quality products are available in the market from from some countries and if we buy those products okay today it starts running but by the time warranty period is over by the time two to three years are or five years is over we have seen practically ourselves in in middle east in dubai and at many locations that those products start failing and they start cracking and they start uh, you know giving troubles so replacing a wrong part is more expensive than buying a good product at a higher price because that that it would mean that we have to stop the operations of that building we have to stop the air conditioning or if it is a manufacturing plant then we have to stop the manufacturing so replacement is is sometimes is more very very expensive uh, than buying a good product at the right time which is the you know at the design stage and at the procurement type for the first time yep thank you, thank Marcus. you. Then um, let us uh, perhaps quickly reflect on the on the cooling tower guidebook. Um, you have all been part of the of the of the process of writing it. Uh, if you look at the at the final outcome, what uh, how, what do you think about it, and uh, how do you how do you recommend uh, our audience to 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 use it, Raf? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a I'm very proud of the outcome and uh, I'm very also proud that we contributed uh, all as 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 uh, as industry members as uh, manufacturers as competitors uh, with the same passion and with the same engagement to this uh, guidebook and it's not a very extensive guidebook it's a couple of pages that provide you with the basics of evaporative cooling but also it clearly uh, indicates the importance of a couple of critical aspects related to evaporative cooling it will take out a lot of misconceptions and it also gives uh, a clear access to specific topics where 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 where, uh, where we as industry uh, leaders in the evaporative cooling or uh, extending our hand to the market to say look if you have questions on this if you have doubts on this please reach out to us we are there to help you we're there to guide you uh, it's not one fits all there are multiple solutions there are multiple different conditions that need to be taken into consideration and we are there to help you these are the guidelines these are the basics please be aware of them please uh, uh, understand them these are available uh, to you as a as a as a as a as a gift from us to the industry. We will also make sure that we will promote this extensively to all the different markets, and uh, and 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 yeah, we are there to help you. Thank you. Uh, ju just to add, Marcus, on what Raf mentioned on this, I see one more one very important aspect into this document um, because I was also involved. 
that this is a sort of neutral document. It's not coming from only one manufacturer. All the four major manufacturers participated from the beginning to the end, and it is not specific to a specific manufacturer. So, so it's a neutral document. A consulting engineer or an architect or a contractor can have a look, and then they know what to choose, what to do. And then also they know that you know how they can contact the manufacturer with these guidelines, so that you know the the result they would be that they will get the best product uh, for their specific project. Yep. Thank you, Chad. Yep. You okay? Any? Sure. On that? Of course. Of course. What uh, the, the most thing I liked? Of course, there are many aspects I liked about that uh, guidebook, but the most important part is that it's setting the standards, right? and for for any designer for any end user for any operator to understand the critical terminologies of any cooling towers right in terms of the cycle of concentration in terms of the type of the cooling towers where to use each type of cooling towers in its right application right so just to elaborate on what raf and jay have said this is a really a fruitful neutral book that it's it's a it's a written in a very simple uh, language to just to orient orient or let's say educate the market and the most important thing setting standards because I believe that was much needed in, in many markets minimum standards for designers to consider when they work on any evaporative system thank you um, before we come to to the questions of the audience uh, I would like to uh, otherwise, again, we have the Cooling Tower Guidebook available as a handout, which you can download directly out of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, we will make the presentations of today also available for download at our website. Uh, to that matter, you will receive uh, an, a follow-up email from our site once everything is uploaded. Um, we have a couple of uh, questions now. So, uh, Ibrahim. Saleh is asking how much is the minimum distance allowed between the cooling tower and any construction obstruction in the, on the roof? Uh, well, uh, if you allow me, guys, I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, well, usually it will depend on the type of the cooling tower. All right, there is nothing called minimum, uh, the size of the cooling tower and the type of the cooling tower. And usually these data will be written in the selection sheet. And it, it gives usually multiple options, if it, with, whether it's a solid wall, whether it's, a, it's louvers, and it gives the height as well. So usually there is no rule of thumb as of now for any product. It depends. It depends really. Each product has its own uh, uh, parameters that need to be considered. So you, for whatever you need to look at the spaces, you need to check that specific selection and see what's the allowable space that are required for that specific product and this information this information is provided by the manufacturer of the cooling tower it's written in the selection sheet along with uh, uh, other parameters sorry jay yeah no i just want to add uh, what what shukri said is is correct uh, normally when we talk about layout guidelines there are two important parameters to be considered for for any cooling tower for any installation one of them is from the maintenance perspective and second is from the air velocity perspective because the, the cooling tower uh, the efficiency depends on the free air flow the more the air flow you know we have the better the efficiency would be so from maintenance perspective if you if you need there is a wall and and you need a maintenance space it as shukri had shown in one of his sketches it, it's approximately 0.7 to 1 meter approximately if from maintenance perspective only but if you look at from the air velocity perspective we need to calculate the air velocity from that side depending on the product type depending on the installation depending on how many cooling towers are installed because if there are multiple cooling towers we have to consider those considerations also so all these guidelines are briefly mentioned in the guidebook already and the best would be that if the designer consults the the manufacturer and shares the layout and the total number of products required based on that what height it is you know and whether the wind direction is in the same uh, flow which is taking away the heat from the cooling tower 
whether the top of the cooling tower is at the same level which is the next restriction the wall restriction whether the wall is lowered or it is full how much is it lowered 50% 60% so there are many many criteria which we need to consider uh, to calculate the air velocity based on it and then see okay yeah, this air velocity is safe for a centrifugal type of a fan or for an axial type of a fan and then decide yes this is the distance critical distance we can decide based on that thank you thank you yep. um i will share a few questions with you by email uh, after the uh, after the webinar so that because because we we receive more and more questions now we cannot answer all of them um i would like uh, to use one of the or come up with one of the questions of mohammed uh, mudaba i think uh, what is the term thermodynamic equation utilized in calculating the ca capacity of cooling tower if inlet outlet temperature to cooling tower wet bar temperature and flow rate of chiller condenser water has been given I repeat, what is the thermodynamic equation utilized in calculating the capacities of a cooling tower if you have uh, the inlet and outlet temperature, wet bulb temperature, and flow rate of chiller condenser? So normally it is uh, it's this flow in the liters per second into delta T in degree centigrade. Multiple and multiplied by a constant factor of 4.186. This gives us the capacity in, in kW. That is a thermodynamic uh, formula uh, which we use. But otherwise, if, if the chiller capacity is known to us and if other parameters are not known to us, for an example, if we know that the chiller is 100 tons cooling capacity or 1000 tons, for an example, approximately 20% is, is the thumb rule. That means we need to consider 1200 tons equivalent heat rejection because we have heat of compressor also added to it so so evaporation plus heat of compressor makes the total heat rejection capacity at the cooling tower mm -hmm. thank you then uh, joe rocky has a, a question on the cooling tower locations in hospitals as regards to legionella are there any special um, um, advices from your side where the cooling tower can be positioned So, yes, I would like to take that. Uh, in fact, the location is not uh, very specific with regards to Legionella. I would just make sure that you buy a qualitative equipment uh, which has been designed, uh, uh, taking into consideration all the uh, design regulations uh, in relation to Legionella. Typically, these are also outlined by Eurovent and CTI. In the design of cooling towers, there are a couple of design aspects which you need to take into consideration to to make sure you avoid legionella but as part of the uh, operation and regular maintenance procedures of a cooling tower uh, similar to the maintenance or operation procedure of any water tank in a hospital or any shower head in a hospital you need to make sure that you have a water treatment program in place and you need to monitor that regularly with with uh, with regular water checks and for a cooling tower, that also means that 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 every month, every two months, every three months, it depends on on the on the regulation in a given country or on the operation strategy of that plant. You need to take the Legionella count in the water and make sure that it stays below certain levels. And every cooling tower these days operates with uh, biocides that will make sure that the bacteria development in the circulating water of the cooling tower will be would be kept to a, to, a, to a strict minimum to avoid any development of Legionella. Also, any cooling towers uh, have drift and that drift should also be certified by the, by the maximum uh, drift allowances as stipulated by CTI and Eurovent. And as long as drift is kept below these uh, limits, the risk for Legionella is, is, is very minimal to, to almost non-existing. So again, it's important to buy qualitative equipment, to buy equipment with, uh, that follows guidelines and, uh, and standards, and that is also certified as per the guidelines from the third party instances, such as Eurovent and CTI. Thank you, Raf. Um, we have a, a question specifically uh, regarding certification from Amr Uda. 
is it possible a manufacturer can produce a certified product at multiple lo locations? So that is uh, that regards how how is Eurovent certifying CTI is certifying uh, the manufacturer specifically? And I believe uh, Chukri, you, uh, I think you can you can help on that side. Um, if I'm correct, then uh, Eurovent is doing factory audits, which CTI is not including. But Eurovent certified products, they would be factory audited, right? Yes, actually, and uh, all all the tested products actually are tested within the factory itself. All right, and we have we have I have witnessed actually a few of the tests of the Eurovent CTI test at the factory where they have announce that they want to test a specific product that we build the product for them they came and they started testing with their equipments so yes it's regardless of the location if i understood the question correctly it's regardless of the location uh, that the product itself as long as fall under the same criteria or the quality control that are raised by eurovent certified the location doesn't matter is that correct this is what the question was meant to be yeah. marcus I think it is. Uh, um, if, if I'm not much mistaken, if you produce at, a, at multiple locations, then uh, each location needs to needs to undergo an audit as well. So oh, you mean different it, factory location? Yes. Well, as far as I know, um, no, it doesn't have to do with the location, and maybe uh, BAC guys also can. Uh, comment on this so, as far as i know it's not into the location but guys your inputs is welcome so it depends of course to which standard that you look uh, if you only look at the cti standard they can certify performance of a product or a product line regardless of where it is produced as long as the product is produced as per the same uh, uh, configurations by the same uh, product design now eurovent took it one step further where they said no it's also very important for us to understand where the products are made, and Eurovent will, next to the CTI performance uh, certification, will also audit uh, the factory, the manufacturing facility on a yearly basis to make sure that what has been uh, 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 informed as, as, as being produced in a, in a given factory will also still be produced in that factory, that, uh, that, 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 that the quality aspects, that the performance aspects that have been uh, allocated to a certain factory will also still be maintained every year. So this is this is an uh, an important aspect from the Eurovent certification, where where they will also uh, put a lot of emphasis on the on the on the audit of a factory. Thank you, Ralph. So I hope that answers the question. It always uh, depends on which certification you're looking at. The CTI uh, certification does not require an audit, uh, but the Eurovent certification does. Um, so to be sure, always make sure that you ask for both. If you can uh, ask for Eurovent and CTI certification, that's of course the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what are the data required to report a potential CTI violation? I think this is also a, a point which uh, should be taken into consideration. If you come across uh, a, a wrongful product which is apparently uh, miscertified or or does not fulfill the, the requirements uh, make sure that you check back with a certifying agent and uh, give a give give a give a report of the of the circumstances uh, but that always depends really on which certification is in place or which certification exactly the product holds if it's a European certified product and you 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 observe some uh, some indications that uh, it might have been uh, wrongfully claimed that it's certified, then uh, please get in touch with Eurovent uh, certification uh, through the website eurovent-certification.com. Um, it should, should also, before you, before you choose a product uh, and you want to re uh, rely on certified products, then please always make sure that you cross-reference and cross-check the certificates with the database, with the online database of the certifying body. Make sure that the, the certificate is uh, still uh, valid. Uh, with your event, you have, as Raf uh, said, you have annual audits. And 
only only if those audits are done uh, correctly, the, the certificate will keep its validity. So always make sure you cross check it with the online database. I would like to Marcus, to... Marcus, yes? just one 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 uh, addition to what you mentioned. Uh, I have seen many people. Uh, what they do is some manufacturers who are not certified and they can be member of Eurovent, they can be member of member of CTI. So what they mention on their cooling tower nameplates is member of Eurovent, member of CTI. So those are not certified uh, cooling towers because certification would mean that the performance, thermal performance of the cooling tower would be as per, let us say, CTI 201 standard or whatever is the standard. Uh, but member of CTI or member of Eurovent doesn't mean that the product is certified for its thermal performance. That's what I wanted to add. Yeah, thank um, you. Uh, to in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, even you can not only check all the uh, published uh, certified product categories or, 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 or product models, but you can even go a step further. Uh, all the uh, uh, operating conditions for which a product is being certified in terms of performance are also published so you can verify your project design conditions and see if those conditions fall within the uh, uh, product certification conditions uh, for your given model and that is also very very important to do because sometimes a certain model can be certified within a, a limited operating range and your project conditions fall outside that range which means that this product is not certified. And this is very important to verify as a, as a project owner or as a project consultant. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, again, it is really essential to not just look at the, at the, at the label or at the, at the, at the logo. Uh, also, as uh, Jai rightly said, just to state to be a member of your event or CTI doesn't mean that your product is certified. Uh, the certificate, the, the, the performance certificate is an essential document to look at because that gives you the overview which parameters are certified, what is the, what is the rated capacity, uh, how is the performance doing, you have all the, the parameters are uh, outlined in the certificate. So always cross-check the, with the online database the validity of the certificate and, and, and of course also look at the details uh, of, the, of the certification sheets. Um, I have one more um, advice that comes from uh, Gary van den uh, Ende, and that is that there is also a Eurovent uh, document on Legionella control, which is uh, a code of, uh, of, of good practice, uh, how to keep your cooling system efficient and clean. Uh, we will see if we can make this document also available uh, for download at the event uh, page on our, on our website. Uh, we have reached the, the, the maximum time uh, for this webinar already. We have a couple of uh, more questions which has been raised by our uh, audience. As said before, we will share this, your questions with all of our speakers and uh, they will make sure that they will uh, get in touch with you by email and clarify those questions to you uh, after, the, after the webinar. I would like to thank again all of uh, the presenters, uh, Chukri, Chai and Raf. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for your work on uh, the presentations. I am uh, very happy about uh, the, the results. Uh, again, thank you also for, for your work on the Cooling Tower Guidebook. I believe we can be really uh, happy with the results and we are looking forward to receive further comments then from, uh, from the audience. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, oh, everyone, thank you. for attending. Thanks again for your contribution to the workshop. Um, thank you also to Climate Control Middle East, our media partner. And last but not least, of course, to the audience who stayed with us uh, today. Um, thank you for your interest. Uh, thank you for your participation, for your questions. If you have any further comments, questions, please never hesitate to uh, get in touch with us, either through our uh, social uh, media uh, channels, uh, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us and sign up to our YouTube channel. Again, the recordings of this webinar will be uploaded uh, there in due time. And if you have any further aspects you want to you wanna exchange with the speakers, we will share with you uh, 
by email then the, the handouts and the, the contact details of our speakers as well. Thank you very much for today and I wish you a very pleasant uh, final uh, days in this year. Hope uh, we will not see us anymore this year because I want to go on holidays soon. So <laughs> happy, uh, have a good holiday season and uh, happy new year to everyone. Thank, Thank you, you very same. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good end of the year. Bye-bye.